Sir, welcome. My name is Matt Bash from David Memorial. How are you doing? Very well. Good, sir. If I could please have your name and rank. <coughs> Donald Denton. Uh, I was a sergeant in the Marine Corps. Fantastic. And, sir, if you could just start us off when you first became involved with the Marines, just bring us through your military mm -hmm. career. I enlisted at the age of 18 from Rockford, Illinois, and uh, went through boot camp at San Diego, a Marine Corps recruit depot. I came home for Christmas. Uh, as a private first class, and at that point in 1966, when all of my uh, peers had gone to college, and I showed up at the uh, Christmas party in my greens, I realized that uh, we had chosen very different paths. Uh, I then went to uh, what was then called the A School uh, at Pensacola uh, at Corey okay. Field. And I had no idea what I was getting into uh, in uh, basic training or boot camp. Uh, when the rest of my unit went on to infantry training regiment, uh, two of us stayed behind to wait for our security clearances to be granted. And uh, we got to Corey Field a few days after New Year's and was immediately thrust into a room, large room. It was a naval security group, but uh, okay. the, um, we called it the big room and it was there that we learned Morse code. Oh. And in the big room, uh, a, a Navy chief stood up in front of us, and we had, we had typewriters, and he would say, A! And we'd say, A! Da-da! And we learned Morse code that way. Um, and you also hit the letter A on the typewriter. So you had about probably 80 typewriters, uh, all hitting A at the same time. Um, the A school basically took us up through learning Morse code and being able to listen and, and accurately report, record it uh, up to about 20 groups a minute, which uh, at that time sounded to us sounded fast, but uh, in reality isn't that fast at all. Then we had to wait for our security clearances to be finalized, and at that point, we were still under the impression that the reason we were having to have a security clearance was because we were going to be handling top secret uh, messages from within the, the United States military. So we walked down to, uh, uh, once we got our security badges, to another uh, room in, a, in another building and uh, walked in and the uh, commanding officer of the base, Navy captain, uh, came out on stage. And, uh, of course, the room was full of sailors. There were a few Marines, but there were mostly sailors in the room. And we were ordered not to take the covers off the typewriters until we were told to do so. And so when you're 18 and, uh, and a PFC in the Marines and a Navy captain says that, I mean, you obey. Um, so at a certain point after he welcomed us to uh, the Naval Security Group, he said, now, gentlemen, you may take the covers off the typewriters. We took the covers off and the uh, keys were all in Cyrillic. And it's at that point uh, I felt, oh, this is serious business. And f so for the next, I think, eight weeks, uh, we learned Russian, or uh, enough Russian so that uh, as uh, the Morse operators communicated in back channel in Russian, we would understand what they were saying about the coded groups that they were sending in Morse code. And I still know a little bit of Russian. I can read it a little bit, but obviously I haven't practiced it in a long time. At the end of, of that A school, uh, a number of my uh, colleagues went off either to the Fleet Marine Force or to, uh, in the Navy, they went to uh, land bases like in Scotland or Germany or Japan. Uh, two of us were selected to go on to advanced training in, in what was called the T branch. I had no idea at first what the T branch was because I didn't have the need to know. Um, T branch uh, involved learning non Morse uh, intercept, uh, both uh, what at the time was fax communication and also what is now ELANT. Mm -hmm. And it's a marked change in the security environment in this country that I can now speak these words and these uh, nomenclatures to you. Uh, at the time, we weren't permitted to say any of those words outside of secure spaces. Uh, 
electronic intelligence or communication security, anything like that. Um, but learn the basic signatures of radars, especially shipborne radars or coastal radars, so that we could either uh, identify them or, and then uh, potentially uh, develop countermeasures. Uh, at the, by the time I finished a year there, uh, my first year of enlistment, I was an E-4 corporal. Okay. Uh, rank was pretty fast for the Marines in that MOS. And I finished uh, pretty well. It was second in my class. And um, so again, uh, the sailors were going to uh, Edsel, Scotland, and Bremerhaven, Germany, and uh, Japan, and Portugal. And I thought, you know, man, I'm second in the class here. <laughs> I'd be getting a good set of orders. Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. <laughs> Camp Geiger, nonetheless. Uh, to add insult to injury. And uh, I was employed with a radio battalion. And uh, at the time, uh, uh, American-based radio battalions, uh, we were we resourced the fleet. Uh, and so the what are now called the Marine Expeditionary Units, they weren't that thin. Uh, but they would be a couple of us with our MOS tasked to go on board with the uh, Marines when they were put on board ship and sent, you know, in a, in a unit out to do a Mediterranean cruise and come back. Right? Well, I never got that pleasure. Uh, instead, they decided that uh, some Army reservists needed to be trained in uh, electronic intelligence using the same equipment that the Marines had because the Army no longer used it, but they let the Army Reserves use it. So uh, another, they pulled a uh, corporal from Puerto Rico and myself to go up to Fort Devens, which is an army base, uh, to instruct this group of army reservists. And I was 19, uh, Corporal Howard was 20 and had another month in grade than I did, so he was the senior Marine. Uh, we were in a joint service barracks and all of the uh, army reservists were privates, but they were also in private lives, attorneys, physicians, and so forth. And so. Uh, Corporal Howard and I fell this, fell this group in the first day, and Howard called them to attention, and um, they really didn't know what was going on. They were Army reservists, and so we had to drill them for a while to get them into good military order. Um, it was an interesting time. I spent six months of temporary duty there, and uh, it was really quite an exceptional experience um, being on an army base uh, and having no real duties other than to show up and teach class and go back to the barracks. Uh, we were officially uh, connected to the Marine Corps barracks in Boston uh, and the commanding officer of the barracks said, don't get in any trouble and don't come back, basically. So, you know, you're 19, you're <laughs> on your own, on an army, I mean, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I learned how to ski. Uh, went home on some very extended leaves uh, because school was out. One of the 